Hey there, Social Blade fans. Dave here for another Social Blade YouTube tip of the week. This week, we're going to be talking about how to make custom thumbnails for those videos, which can really help you by grabbing attention. Let's look into some software that you're going to need to get in order to make those photos. Let's start off with a popular one that's free, and it's uh, SourceForge.net. It's called GIMP, and I'll put the links in the description below for all these things. GIMP is a free video, sorry, a photo editor, and um, it's similar to Photoshop, although, of course, these two programs, Paint.net and GIMP, that I'm going to show you, have their limitations. If you really want to spend on Photoshop, well, you can do that as well. And uh, there are some student and teacher editions for $30 a month, which isn't half bad. So let's start off with GIMP here. GIMP you can get and download it, and we'll power it up here. GIMP looks like this. Nothing like Photoshop, but, you know, it can really do a lot. So what is the first thing that you'd want to do in GIMP? Well, you'd want to start a new project, and you can do that by going up to File, New. And the templates, unfortunately, do not have the correct thing that you're going to use. We want a 720p uh, project to work on the canvas. So we're going to go 1280 by 720. And if I ask you for a resolution, uh, usually 72 DPI or X and Y resolution pixels per inch is good enough for this. And uh, that's pretty much 720p is your standard definition for your custom thumbnails. Hit OK. You've got a blank canvas here. I'm not too familiar with GIMP myself. I use paint.net. But basically, that's how you start a project here. So now we've looked at that. Let's look at paint.net. You can go to their page here at the top is the download button. And this one's a little bit more graphical interface. I actually like this program a little bit more. It looks like this. Once again, you're going to start a new project. you got a new button here where you can go to File, New. And we're going to go 1280 by 720. There's no real presets here. And the resolution will set to 72 pixels per inch or DPI. And we'll hit OK. And there we go. And wow, did I set that wrong? <laughs> Let's open that up again. 1280 by 720. 72. There we go. That's more like it. I was going to say, that's widescreen for me there. We can hold down the control or command button, and that allows us to use the middle scroll wheel on our mouse to zoom in and out of the photo. And we can do our image design here. That's pretty cool. Now, what if we want to work in something like Photoshop, which is when I have a composition done in here? You can go to the Adobe website, once again, for a student and teachers, you can get the edition here for $30 a month. You don't really own it, you're sort of just, you know, borrowing it for that, uh, that price. But, you know, it's well worth it, and Photoshop does quite a bit. But I thought I'd show you guys these two free ones for those that don't have the budget to spend on an actual high-end uh, compositing program, if you will. So here's one that we have, and I want to lay out uh, some of the basics that you want to actually cover when making your images. Realize and keep in mind that when you're working with these things and you're designing, your image is probably going to look something like this when people are scrolling through YouTube. It's going to look really small, so you want to use big, bold font, something that's going to stand out. But notice here at the top left, and I'll scroll back in for you guys, this little logo is my bug. That's my trademark for Sonic Orb Studios. I put that in every custom thumbnail that I can because when people are scrolling through YouTube, they'll know as soon as they look at my thumbnail, this is always in the top left, hey, that's a video made by Sonic Orb Studios. That's probably going to be something good. They don't have to look at the description. They don't have to look at the channel owner or who uploaded it. That little logo, people are going to look at the graphical interface before anything. So try to make yourself a custom bug that stands out and put it in the same place or roughly the same spot whenever you make a custom thumbnail. Other than that, big bold font that stands out here. we got some outer glow to this. And when it's in the lower uh, resolution, when it's a really small image, you can still read it. I've got a product here that I was reviewing. So I showed the original image that I've sort of masked out. So you can see that's on its own layer. And the nice thing about these programs is they work on different layers. So you can adjust things like your different font. You can choose different things like your outer glow that you turn on and off to add a little of uh, zap to it, make it stand a little bit more. But that's basically it, guys. Custom thumbnails is pretty much the, the front of your image. It's going to be that sort of thing that you used to look for when you're picking out your DVDs, your Blu-rays, whatever it is in the movie stores that you use to rent. Now it's all Blu-ray, but it is what sort of grabs the viewer's attention. So make it sort of pop and stand out. Don't go overly complex and have something that's 
trademark to your channel name, be it a bug like this, that helps people say, hey, this was made by that person. It's got to be a great production, right? So that's the tips that I have for you guys today. Photoshop, GIMP, and Paint.net. I'll put the links in the description below for all these great programs, some of them free, some of them not, but well worth the purchase if you want to go with the free, or sorry, the non-free Photoshop here. I'm Dave, and this has been another Social Blade YouTube Tip of the Week. Hey, if you guys have any comments, questions, anything below, they can go in the comment section below. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoy this video. And if you have any thoughts about something we haven't covered yet, leave them in the comments or send us a message, and we'll be sure to put that on the production list. And the next time you're checking your stats at socialblade.com, don't forget to check out all the social media sites that we're on. They can all be found at socialblade.com. I'm Dave once again. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next week.